Okay, folks, here it is. It is the last video in this series. Well, probably not the last video forever. It's the last video for right now. We'll wrap up this round of testing. Uh, if my battery testing is any indication, then uh, I'm going to get some attention from this and more people are going to send me more stuff to test. Oh, and the two pineapples module didn't make it in time for this round. It's supposed to be on the way. I didn't get to test it. So we, I got to follow up with that, right? But for now, here's what we've got. And let's talk about the results. We'll start by talking about the elephant in the room, the clear view. And um, I want to start, some of you must not have watched the clear view video because I see comments uh, referring to the clear view as being $700. And it is the clear view pro is $680. But there's also a clear view racing, which is only $400. Uh, and the clear view racing for $400 has the exact same RF performance and secret sauce algorithm as the pro. It just lacks some of the configurable bells and whistles and you can go to the Clearview website if you wanna know more about that. So if you were looking at the Clearview and you thought that the Clearview was better, but you think 680 is too much, if you could see your way to 400, you don't have to go without. So was the Clearview better? I Yeah, it totally was. It was, it was totally better. Like I half expected to get the clear view and I would try it and be like, eh, whatever. no, no, it was just better. It was, it was better, I think, in two ways. Number one, the clear view had the same or better range as the other diversity modules with a 2 dB antenna on the clear view. Whereas the other diversity modules, if you look at my the first half of the range testing, they were all on an 8 dBi patch antenna. So the Clearview is at a significant handicap. One way to think about this is that the Clearview is roughly the same as having an 8 dBi patch facing everywhere, right? So with your diversity module, you put an 8 dB patch on it and you get additional range like in one direction. Well, the Clearview kind of just gives you that same range everywhere or better. The other thing about the clear view that I noticed was that the way that it broke up, number one, the clear view never glitched. It does not glitch. Those white streaks and where the screen will kind of roll didn't happen. It just doesn't glitch. All it does is it fuzzes out. It's a very analog style of fuzz, just like your old uh, analog television signal way back in the day when your rabbit ears were out of alignment. So it fuzzes up. And actually, I will say it took a little getting used to because I'm used to seeing a relatively clear picture that then gets all glitchy. And I go, okay, I'm getting too many glitches and I turn back. But with the clear view, since I never saw glitches, there was one time when I flew to the end of the range and it got all and its screen just kind of turned to snow. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and I, I had to land and, and go pick up, I had to walk and go pick up my copter and pull it out of a bush. So if you do fly with the clear view, familiarize yourself with how it, how it degrades. It's not what you're used to, but it degrades in a very, in a very flyable way. The picture is because with, again, with the other modules, you'll be flying, you'll get a big full screen glitch. And for a fraction of a second, you just can't see anything. But with the clear view, you've always got a ghosty grainy picture and maybe you can fly that or maybe you can't but you never get this full on interruption like you do with the others so i would say that if you are well healed if you have a reasonable amount of money and you can swing 400 bucks like if you're the kind of person who would own two sets of goggles just so you have a spare or so you could give one to your friends to, so they can ride along and i know you're out there it's okay then maybe instead of that second set of goggles, you might spend 400 bucks on a Clearview r Racing or maybe 680 on a Clearview Pro if you're even higher up on the sort of economic scale. If you're the kind of person who makes a living with your, your goggles or if you make a hobby, your side living, right? If you make a little bit of money on the side, it's worth thinking about whether the Clearview is, is worth the money to you because it's not just marketing fluff and lies. It, it's just better. Is it is it $400 better? Only you can decide that, but it is better. So think about that. If you can tolerate a ground station and you have the money to spend and you want the best, buy the Clearview. That's the answer. The next one I'm going to go to is the real ACC. And I'm going to go to that because I didn't do a full feature rundown on the real ACC. And one reason I did that is because it came a little late in the game and I've been trying to get this stuff out on a schedule. And the other reason I didn't do that is because the real ACC doesn't have any features 
that the others, it doesn't, it has a subset of the other's features. So one of the things I did in my research for this is I read the RC Group's thread about the real ACC to try and see, you know, what's up. And people were talking on that about, there's this old bug in this firmware where race band channel four is not on the right frequency. It's just wrong. And it's been fixed in the True D and in the Forge, right? That's all fixed. But at least according to the guys on the RC Group's thread, not this one. Or maybe it's fixed today. Maybe I, I'm not 100% sure. But the, I, the point is that this is a budget option, right? And if you want diversity, and that's you just have to have diversity and you only have the price of about 50 bucks to spend, then this is an okay choice. The RF performance on this was, I think it was in some cases better than the True D in some of my tests and some of my commenters seem to agree there. But you have to think about the whole package. Uh, the, the, the fact that the firmware is, is out of date, that there may be unfixed bugs in it, that it's missing features that the others have, the, the RF performance is really not as big a part of the package as you might think. Because at the end of the day, if you could get 50 extra feet, you know, 650 feet versus 600 feet or 585 feet, are you really going to notice that on your day-to-day -day flying? I submit that you will not. But the ability to easily select channels, get on the channel you want, not have to flip through a list, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all those usability features, that's going to really factor in on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have to mention the hardware design here. So I've, I, I can't say what the reliability numbers on this are, but I've seen more than one comment of somebody who got this and then it died, right? And that could be people complaining and, 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 you know, the bad, the people who have a bad experience talk louder than the people who have a good experience. But if you told me that the hardware design for this $50 module from Banggood is not at the same level as a $100 module from UBAD, like, I don't think that's a controversial statement that UBAD works harder at their hardware design and is very, very willing to stand behind their product in a way that perhaps this product is not. One of the things I noticed when I got this is that this screen, and you're not going to see this on this camera, but maybe you will. The edge of that screen, you see how it's floating there? It's not supported. When the LaForge V1 first came out, a whole bunch of people got these screens in the mail and the screen was cracked from shipping. You put the tiniest amount of pressure on that corner there on purpose or by accident and it cracks in your whole screen. So that's, just, that's it. Uh, so well, I noticed that and I was like, yeah. And UBAD started selling metal covers for the screens that you could install. And I have no idea whether the UBAD metal cover will fit this screen. But if you buy one of these, spend another 10 bucks to get the metal cover from UBAD and, and maybe try to put it on there. I don't even know if that'll work. But, but like, you have to be super careful with this, even if you put a 3D cover, molded cover on there uh, and to, to not break the screen. That's a, and that's a thing that was solved six months or a year ago by UBAD. But real ACC here it is. So uh, the, the you, real ACC holds up in the RF performance at, acceptably, and maybe even it's better than some of the modules. But the overall package, I feel, you know, at a fifty dollar price point, I don't know if it's that compelling because. So you're going to spend fifty bucks on this module, and then you're going to spend another ten bucks on a three D printed cover, right? Of course, of course, of course you are. You're going to break your screen if you don't. And at the end of the day, you'll spend sixty bucks, and you could spend eighty bucks and get a true D. And that's not that much more, and the True D is going to come with the, the, the cover, and it's going to have a hardware software that's being actively developed, and so on and so on and so on. I, I feel like if you are just absolutely budget-minded and you must get the diversity module, you really want it, then this is the cheapest way to get into it. But you're giving up a lot, and a lot of the things you're giving up are more important than the diversity that you're actually getting. So there you go. That's where I stand on this one. And that brings us to the True D, the True D. 80 bucks, uh, comes with a cover. Firmware is a little bit behind in terms of features compared to the LaForge. It's got the working channel set instead of the favorites, which is a little bit less configurable, but the guys from, uh, from Furious assure me that that's something they're working on. And, you know, so presumably in the next months or weeks, or I don't know when, a firmware update for this will come out but that doesn't help you if you're trying to order today. I feel like this is a really solid choice. The, the fact that the working channel set is a little clunky is not like a deal breaker. And if you compare it to the price of the LaForge, at the, so the LaForge is going to run you 100 bucks, and if you don't have a 3D printer, you're going to spend another 20 bucks or so getting a set of doors. 
So if you don't have a 3D printer, which most people don't, the price for the LaForge all up is 120. This is only 80. There you go. That's that's compelling, right? That's two thirds as much. On the other hand, the True D in in the range tests, at least, I feel like it did the worst. I feel like it did the worst. Like there was just so much breakup. And actually, the True D also did the worst in my first round of flight testing. And I was so surprised at how bad it did that I was like, did I forget to calibrate the diversity? And I actually recalibrated the diversity and ran another round of testing just to make sure that I hadn't accidentally screwed it up. And no, that so like, I hate to say this because Furious is like the hardware design is kind of what they do, but the Trudy seems to have worse RF performance than the LaForge and even the real ACC. I don't know why. But at the end of the day, it was completely usable in everything I did with it. I, I spent a few days flying around with each of these. I didn't just do the test, take it out of the goggle, throw it away. And if you want to get a single piece module like this with better hardware design, reliability, robustness, the price difference between the real ACC and the True D, when you take into account the fact that you're going to pay 10 bucks more for a 3D printed door for this one, it's uh, it's sixty bucks versus eighty bucks. That's only twenty bucks more. That's only the price of a cup of coffee. No, no, it's like eight cups of coffee. Well, anyway, you get the point. You could probably swing another twenty bucks to get the True D and get a better product, in my opinion. And then we come to the LaForge, and the LaForge. There's a reason why. I'm showing you the other ones in my hand and the LaForge in my goggles. Um, the LaForge is the most expensive one. It's a hundred bucks and it's 20 bucks more if you don't have a 3D printer to get yourself a set of doors. So it's 120 bucks and that is two thirds more than its nearest competitor, the True D. But it's just better. It's just better. I, I hate to say that because, you know, my, my position on product reviews is like help the person find the product that's right for them. And so it kind of hurts me a little to say, nope, this one's just better. Um, but it is. Uh, the RF performance in most cases was better. And I, this was true in the comments as well. Assuming people were being honest and not just picking their favorite, many people were saying that number two was better, which was the LaForge. People seem to agree, the LaForge looked better. Now, is it is it day and night better? No, none of it was really day and night, but it's better in terms of RF performance. I feel like it's better in terms of form factor, in terms of the ability to, you know, look, it's, it sticks out relatively little, it's evenly balanced left to right, so you're not, you have this kind of thing hanging off your head, and, and, you know, the ability to change the channels with the buttons here, good. The ability to just, just good. The form factor is good and the features are good. So UBAD has uh, the best features. It has arguably the best RF range. And it has, in my opinion, the best form factor. The only thing holding it back is that it's so expensive. And if you want to do an internal install, you have to do surgery on your goggles. Now people are saying, oh my God, Screw it, oh, LaForge, I can't do. You don't have to do an internal install, people. You don't have to. Many people just take some tape and they tape their goggles or they have a 3D printed track and the wire runs on the outside and it's fine. And with the older version of the LaForge, I think anyway, you had to do surgery on the diversity side. You actually, you the module wouldn't fit in there all the way unless you cut it away. I didn't have to do that. I don't know if that's LaForge V2 or if that's the 3D printed door or what. You don't have to do any surgery on your goggles at all if you're willing to run the wire on the outside. Okay, so that's your call, but that's not a that's not mandatory. And so you just have to ask yourself whether you're willing to pay a hundred dollars plus twenty bucks for the door for the LaForge versus eighty for the True D or fifty for plus ten for the door for the real ACC. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this uh, a roundup of testing. Thanks for watching. Hope it's been educational. Hope it's helped you decide what you want to buy. Let me know, know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what you've settled on. And as always, happy flying.